More Steel Division 2, today I'm doing a replay commentary because this was a match I played during a live stream and I thought it was, um, it was an interesting one to show off. One reason is because we were playing as the Soviets and I really haven't played that, that much. And the second reason is this is actually breakthrough where people didn't crash in the beginning. So um, that should also be an interesting thing to look at. So if we quickly jump over to the neutral mode, we can see that the enemy is putting down the putting down some MG42 bunkers pretty much everywhere they can. Um, the other units or other players aren't really focusing that much on the defenses because they're, I, that might actually be the reason that it didn't crash in the first place because they didn't put too many defenses down just yet. So the goal of this gameplay is to try to stabilize the amount of conquest positions that each team has to make sure that this does not drain too far or too quick because right now it is draining at a really really high rate and um, if that keeps up we will lose within 30 minutes um, if we don't take back these positions so on the right I'm playing with the 26th infantry um, guard division of the Soviet Union and my objective here is to take over this at least the right side of the town here by initially moving up to these farms um, and then hopefully I can maybe even push up more. But uh, it, as long as we get to the middle of the map, that is really fine by us. So I'm initially putting up a firing position line here with some 45s. We have some artillery, we have one AA piece. We have some additional AT guns here. This is three, which is quite powerful. And we have some Guardia DPs and some Sapperies moving up to the tree line here. And we immediately witness these guys making a really early push into my flank here which I did not really expect. I expected them to kind of hang out in the back here. So I quickly move up my infantry and just hold that forest. So over here nothing really focusing or no one focusing on this position so I just decide to move up a, a few units. So initially I'm moving up a recon and I also have some Sapris and Guardias moving up to the left and the plan here is to <clears throat> at one point use this forest to flank into this town and perhaps also get some AT guns in that forest. So we have some Sturmschützen engaging our Guardias and since these guys have 13 STG-44s they will be wrecking my absolute face. These guys are really good at CQC so I'm trying to keep these Guardias and Rasvetkas at a slightly longer distance since they can then utilize their Mosin guns and the MGs and the SVT-40s. And only that way we can actually outmatch these guys a little bit. But he does have a stock 3 g that is giving some nice fire support over there. So the enemy calls out a recon, we quickly scramble two Yak-1B Normandies to engage it. Sadly the 109 is really quick so we don't catch up with it with the Yak-1Bs. The good thing about using these fast recon planes is that they make the enemy spend points on fighters really early on. It, like even if they didn't have to. So that might be a good psychological warfare tactic right there. And speaking of Yuto, we have Yuto here on the far left with a lot of lot of infantry. He has these Tanko de San Nikis, the Chiki Brikis with eight PPSHs and some smoke nades. And he also has some Guardias and that is basically it actually. He has really bought a lot of these Tanko de uh, somethings, the Chiki Brikis. So on the right we have a Nebel Werfer that is about to open up on our position here. Two of them actually. That is just going to stun absolutely everything in this forest. Probably once again going to be followed up by a big push with infantry coming up from that area. So I quickly decide to fall back these guys um, you know, before they just surrender. In the meantime I do have some tanks that I've called out. Four KV-1Es, the extra armored KV-1s. They're just moving up to this thinner tree line here so that they can give some fire support against these Nash horns. And speaking of, I also have this SU-76 that is standing by to engage any of said units. So we have a 45 here and later in the game I move that up to here to try to get some flank shots on any tanks that might be in that area. <coughs> That was actually a really good shot with that SU-85 there. 
really good guns on these um, tank destroyers. They're kind of like they're kind of like glass cannons, but they actually have about the same armor as some light tanks that you can buy. So it's actually pretty um, pretty useful to get these guys. So we have an Ashhorn on the left, really strong tank destroyer, but once again a glass cannon. And in the meantime, we have downright awful just loading up all of the infantry you can get with these after machikis, really good close range infantry, together with some Guardia DPs to move up on the hill and take over that forest. In the meantime, we have a stuck 3G being taken out by the KV-1Es, so I decided to just keep moving this guy up to engage the Nash horn that we have over there, and we quickly kill the loader, so after he fires a shot, he will have to wait for the loader to either be replaced or be recruited, I guess. But they make a really good move by using their artillery to try to stun these tanks before I take out that Nash horn, but with the last shot from the KV-1Es, I do manage to do just that. And I also have some more after Machikis moving up to take over that forest there. So we have some Yak 1B Normandies just flying around, um, enticing the enemy to move up their fighters or make them buy more fighters. And it just shows that we have air supremacy here by flying over some planes over there, over there as, uh, throughout their airspace, I guess. So this MG42, it cannot really see too much. Um, it can see stuff that go, go down this road. That is honestly about it. So he makes a good move here by waiting for more infantry to move up and then he will quickly rush that um, MG bunker. Probably a misclick by this person here. Moving up some infantry out in the open. Quickly getting suppressed heavily by all of the machine guns opening up on these poor lads. Yeah, and at this point they're, they're pretty much pinned down and they do need to retreat before they do get killed off completely by all of these DP-28 machine guns and all of the rifles that these guys have. And that is a good thing about these Guardias. Um, they're really good at medium range and longer range engagements. So I've taken over this position by moving up just one squad of Guardia DP. Um, if the enemy was focusing heavily on this hill, I would have basically been cut off from any reinforcements from the left side. So <clears throat> over here I moved up this heavy recon plane that quickly made the enemy actually call in a ME-109 fighter. So I call in a P-2R that actually does have the possibility of engaging all enemy fighters um, to try to lure him even more over our AA and we do actually pin him down and damage his weapons. So he's out of the equation for a while. We have a Flag 41 that we pinned down with our tanks. We're just gonna keep engaging that until we take that out. I actually order these guys to engage that supply truck since they might be resupplying those Neville workers there or helping out with other resupplying um, objectives. And we also have some artillery rain down on them and I, sh and I think I actually managed to stun that thing just in time and now it is pinned down. So with these tanks I will just keep engaging that Neville Werfer until we just take it out because those are just super annoying. Especially if you're on a concentrated area such as this. So in the meantime we have downright making a big push for the hill here with all of his after machikis <clears throat> and since he has all of these PPSHs he's just gonna stun the crap out of these units and make them all surrender since the enemy does not seem to have a leader nearby and there go those units and yeah that was a really really quick takeover of that hill right there so on the left we have Yuto engaging that MG42 which is pretty much stunned we have a Pack 36 moving up here, but we have two T-34s that are quickly engaging that to push it back or to actually stun it, panic it, or actually take it out. We have some infantry out in the open here with some Pentagrenadiers firing onto those guys with two MG42s, and um, they're not going to have a great time. And that Pack 36 is basically done for here. If we go over to the right, since we have this hill now, downright will now use his elevated position to move down and try to capture this side of the road here which will which would enable him to set up firing positions to take over this position that conquest position there we have some trenches that are basically making these infantry units superhumans since now they won't they will almost not take any suppressive damage um, unless from like tanks or artillery or bombs on the right <clears throat> once again a really big push with lots of storm shoots in, so I have these 
after Machiki is now on level 3 because I have a leader and a commander nearby that is basically stunning the crap out of these stormships and um, well enabling these after Machikis to be really overpowered and actually deal quite a lot of damage to these guys here. And I also have my artillery waiting down to suppress the ones in the back and there goes that unit. And that is basically the push on the right. Some spare trooper and guardia DPs finding it out in the building. It looks like the spare trooper might actually win that one. And in the meantime, I'm engaging a stug 3 with three of my KV-1s. And funny enough, these are actually two stugs. But since they're really close to each other, they will take about the same suppressive damage from any shell that lands nearby. Like if the left one gets hit, the right one will get stunned as well. So do please spread out your tanks. <clears throat> now we have some more capable tanks moving up on the left. We have a Tigre that is in a kind of a bad position here. It would have been better if he moved him up on the hill. Um, he would be able to take out at least everything that moves down that road. And he would actually be able to engage the T-34s if he maneuvered that into a good firing position there. But then again, he also already has a Tiger over there. So lots of Guardias moving up, encountering some Panzergrenadiers. And we have the Tenko uh, Chichibrikis in the back. And in the meantime, we have the Aftermachikis and the Tenko Chichibrikis moving up through the woods, but they encounter Panzergrenadiers in trenches with two MB-42s. So that is not gonna end well, to say the least. But it's funny enough, they actually move out of that place. So we have the Tigers engaging the T-34 over here. That is probably going to be a sad day for this T-34. Although they are both kind of missing pretty horribly. On the right, we have the ME-109 fighter trying to engage my P-2R once again. Um, I still only have these Maxim AA guns. So I do need to be really, really careful with my planes here. So the ME-109 does decide to keep engaging my recon so my AA can actually open up and try to do as much damage to these guys as possible. And with the help of the Yak-9s here that I called in, we take that out real quick. And in the meantime, I'm calling out some IL-2s to try to take out, at or at least stun these tanks. These are only the 20 mil variants, so they don't have the uh, 37 guns, um, 37 mil guns on the front. This guy does though. But since we lost line of sight, it is not going to engage it. But luckily we also have some cluster rating down right there. There we go. So with this force secure, I make a move for the town here. And funny enough, we've actually also captured this position with the infantry on this side. And maybe there should be kind of like a frontline barrier, um, you know, because of a river or something. Because that shouldn't be possible in real life if you ask me. So we have lots of tanks that are really stunned, so I just move in these kv monies a little bit. We also have an OT-34 that is just going to Blitzkrieg into this town to try to do as much damage as possible there to infantry. We have kind of lost a little bit of this hill here because the enemy has been investing more and more Sturmschutzen and Pioneers, which is going to basically outmatch these Aftermachiki since they're being forced together into a bundle like that. But we also have downright awful focusing more points to capture both of these forests on either side of the road. But in the meantime we have a pack 40 engaging the tanks and I don't think this guy's gonna have a great time, to say the least. Yeah, there, there goes that guy. I think he might get a shot here in a second. Nope. He's a champ. He's just bouncing and bouncing after each every shot. <clears throat> that was a scary encounter for this OT-34, so I quickly decide to move him up behind this building to try to keep him in cover for as long as possible while I move in my KV-1Es um, over here to try to engage that Stug, and we actually do manage to take it out. Funny enough. I think the OT-34 might have actually done it. Is he gonna take out a tank? Oh my god, he did. That is amazing. So at this point we have Felipe surrendering on the far right flank. Probably since I took out all of his tanks here. He 
yeah, these Aftermachikis are not gonna have a great time here out in the open. They're quickly being stunned. But, it's good, it's actually giving our tanks some more time to engage their tanks. And we also have these IL-2s that are moving in, taking out one of these Stugs. And we also have our cluster planes moving in to go for the Stug in the back here. And these are just beautiful planes. They're just so good. They have so many cluster bombs. That is going to that. Yeah, there you go. Stug destroyed. They still have a lot of units in here, actually, I think. Yeah, since the AI took over, and there is now allies helping on the far right side, this place is just going to be flooded with either infantry or tanks. So I'm definitely starting to get outmatched here, and I might need some support from friendlies. But in the meantime, I'm just calling out literally everything I can. So in the middle, we have Bubble making a big push for the hill here as well. Lots of Aftermachikis, tanks, Sapperis, and some more fire support moving in to try to secure this part of the hill. There's actually a conquest point right here. So this hill is definitely really important, not just for its conquest points that it has, but also for its elevated position, enabling you to push up pretty much everywhere in this general region. If you have AT guns or AA pieces or artillery or whatever or tanks on this hill, you can just suppress anything um, in a two kilometer mile or two kilometer radius. So Bubble quickly moves up his infantry here to secure that conquest point and with that he pushes that front line up quite a bit, um, telling us that the enemy does not really have anything positioned over there. So he decides to just keep going with one more after Machiki and he manages to take over one more bridge. Funny enough. We have some 190s trying to engage my L2s. Since we don't really have any AA here, this guy is probably a goner. Yeah, there he goes. But we do have this really epic, really epic air supremacy fight going on right over here. Although troop morale is slipping. And that is not going to go away, is it? Nope. That is really cool. I do like the air fights. They definitely look more cinematic in Steel Division 2 compared to Steel Div 1. So I think that really concludes most of the intense or more intenser battles here. Although we literally still need a point, um, we do have the more important positions taken over apart from the far right town there um, but we are slowly trying to triple or quadruple team on that flank and we also have bubble here helping downright to take over the remainder of this hill to get as many conquest points as possible meanwhile on the left yuto has made some progress here he has all of his tanks all of his t-34s moving up to try to suppress anything that comes down this road although they are starting to whip out some panthers and tigers so um i really hope these tanks are up for the task that is that is that is quite a scary scary situation these guys are in. I mean that that just looks pretty horrible. I would not want to be the the gunners or drivers of this tank if you're up against a panther or a tiger. Really, they're they're like in the worst position here as well. They're they're be basically being crossfired here. And there goes one tank. Yeah, those guys are not going to have a great time. I would probably have fallen back there at that point, or at least smoked off the enemy tanks. Speaking of tanks, we have some tanks here giving fire support to these units pushing up into the into the city or the town here on top of this hill. And I gotta say, this looks pretty epic. At least we can give some cinematic shots of units in this case. That looks pretty dope, actually. Cool. And yeah, that, that hill is now ours. That is going to be a really, really big help. So let's quickly jump over to my side here. So I finally managed to push up some infantry into the conquest point here. So we have taken that over just by a hair 
in the meantime, I was just trying to move up some more infantry here and move up some Zapperzees that have some TNTs to quickly kill off all of that infantry there. We also have some off map hitting in the back and the IL-2 that is trying to do trying to do his best. He's just trying to prove himself on the battlefield here, but I think he might just die from enemy ASFs. KV-85 and a KV-1E still giving some fire supports. Some blight grenadiers, really good infantry units as well. More CPC rather than longer range engagements, but definitely worth using. Yeah, and we lost that plane there, sadly. So, Phase C literally just started, and the good thing about this game mode is that we keep receiving less points, while the enemy starts receiving more and more points, because they are defending. So they will be starting with a lot, like a really low income, but they will gain more and more um, later on. Oh, that was painful. That was actually, that actually looks pretty dope. Not gonna lie. So, <laughs> to make a really big push, I basically called out as many tanks as possible to at least try to secure this position here and this hill here. So with the with the enemy being basically overpowered at this point, they get more income and they just spam the crap out of you. <clears throat> so with that said, we try to take over as many points as possible before the enemy just outright caught us and caught, caught, catches us out in the open. Jesus, English. Yeah, as you can see, they have a really strong AA net there, so bombing is definitely out of the out of the question. So with the help of my two Andrushas, I decide to stun basically nothing here. I do manage to stun this Pack 37 and the Flak 38, um, 20 mil in the back, and also the Sturmschützen. I decide to move up my tanks here a little bit. They do have an AT infantry there that is probably going to be bad news um, for this KV-1S or any of these tanks here in a second, since I did not bring any recon with them. That transmission. That is a sad day for that transmission. We do manage to quickly stun it before it gets another shot off. So, well, uh, I mean, that's that's something at least. Big air fight going on on the right. We have the Yak 1Bs taking out those 109s or 190s. We also have some infantry <coughs> taking the charge here against all of these machine guns and support units in the back. But I think I might have actually lost this because of neglect. Yeah, I think that unit is gonna die. Oh, actually no, we unloaded it. Look at that. And as you can see on the far right flank, they are just drowning this place with infantry. Yeah, Felipe is the AI here. And the micro of the AI is just intense. I mean, look at this. They're just so good. They're literally just flooding the front line at this point. So we're actually not out, of the, um, not out of the battle just yet, but it is not looking great. So what I decide to do is just keep my infantry here as fire support, try to cut off this road here um, to stop all of these reinforcements from coming in, at least for as long as possible. And in the meantime, I have one flamethrower infantry trying to take over this position here on the right which would balance the game out here so there's only nine minutes left until the game's actually done um well at least before we lose actually i should just move that panel i forgot that was an option and in the meantime we still don't really know for sure that we're gonna win so we just try to take as many points as possible here to at least balance the game out pretty intense. The tanks are still surviving over here, not even being able to take out these uh, pac 37s and bunkers. So I do think there needs to be some nerfing going on over there. I personally think they're a little bit too powerful. So in the meantime, speaking of powerful, we have Downright here that is just grouping up all of his tanks. They're actually running out of shells here for the APCRs. Um, 
but they do pl have plenty of AP shells and HE shells it seems. Don't know what he's going to do with that, probably just going to push them up at one point. The enemy has absolutely grouped up this forest here with everything he they can. Just a massive rocket strike there would be just glorious to see. Sturmo, Stur, Sturmo Viki actually doing some good amount of damage to a few infantry units here, but quickly losing that line once again because of uh, no, 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 just spamming. That's the AI, by the way, as well. Just spamming it full of infantry. And with that rocket strike, I don't think I've ever stunned that many units with one rocket strike from an Indusha strike there. If I just fast moved one vehicle through this real quick, I would have made so much surrender. But I do decide to move up some infantry, so we have some Guardians and some more Flamethrower infantry moving up. It's quickly being stunned by Mortar Fire and some Tank Fire. They also do have some 105s and Flag 43s and some more uh, 150s in the back here that is just keeping us pinned down in this town here. And we also have a KV-1E that is engaging a Marta 2. Really good guns. Once again, a glass cannon but if it gets the, those first few shots off you're gonna have a bad time yeah and this kv1 is basically done for another rocket strike hitting that position to try to at least move it a little bit closer to victory so i do have another guardia dp that is moving in once again we are getting a minimal amount of income at this point so we really need to make use of whatever we have here so we have some ig18s that are firing on top of i think my tanks they're only HE powered, but they will actually, well, they have heat shells here, but they're firing with their HE here, and that is actually going to do um, quite a bit of stunning damage. But we quickly pin it down. There's also a pack 40 that we should be watching out for. And I actually don't know if that is going to take out a tank. I don't remember that. Yeah, there's some incendiary going on there. But at this point, I'm just trying to rush the front line to push it back as long as possible. There goes that. There goes that big beautiful beast. So we actually do manage to take over um, this position here. And that kind of looks like... Um, reminds me of Stalingrad. Man, that is that is just an insane amount of infantry at one position. So I do hope these Andrushas are reloaded quick enough. Because all of the units that we stunned here are basically back on the front line once more. So let's just quickly move over to the left flank here. We have some ME410s firing down on some of these tanks of Bubble, which he is just using to quickly capture a few more positions. And with one more position taken over, their cards are ticking down really quick. And uh, we actually managed to push them back quite a bit here. We are kind of edging on the draw slash one conquest point ahead of them, um, funny enough. So if we manage to hold this for a little bit longer, we might be able to win this. So with this position firmly secured for now, and with this position being contested, and with the right side secured just by a hair, if we just hold this for another 5 seconds, we will win the game, which is exactly what we did. So that was definitely a really intense match that I played during a live stream. So if you do want to catch those, you only need to just subscribe to this channel and also just follow me on Twitch since I live stream on there quite frequently as well. So I went really positive. All of my teammates actually went uh, pretty negative there because they just rushed in like crazy. Um, Bubble actually keeping it neutral, but the enemy just beating us to crap over on that middle side. And also I was basically being wrecked on the right. I didn't expect to go positive whatsoever. So lots of kills with the tanks and the infantry. Cluster bombs actually killing three tanks there. So that was pretty nice. KV-85 being a great fire support unit. And yeah, we lost a lot of troops. That was quite, quite painful. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this replay commentary of this very exciting match. Um, if you did, please do like the video to so show your support and check out the links in the description. I guess I'll see you guys back in the next one. So take care.